Hey guys, Chris at the Ultimate Recycler. We have an extension cord here, and this video is going to be concerning just some basic home wiring. If you wanted to know how to properly fit a plug to a cord, whether it's on an extension cord or whether it's on an appliance, whether you're repairing damage, or in this case, I'm actually going to make a really short extension cord because Christine needs one inside. So we've got socket there, plug this end, and then I'll get another socket and I'll then have this other cord, which will be handy in the shed. It was a little bit too long anyway. So in this video, I'm just going to really go through some basics with those of you that like to try and do some uh, DIY stuff. And you may not have had the experience or you might be young and just started out in your own house. And um, more and more these days, people are trying to do DIY and you want to do it safely. You want to know how to do it. And that's where YouTube's pretty good. So also a lot of people are into zero waste and repair cafes and that sort of thing now. So it's a handy skill to know how to put a plug on a cord. You are legally allowed to do it yourself in Australia um, and you want to do it right. You only need an electrician when you actually have fixed wiring. You are allowed to repair portable stuff. But you, of course you want to do it properly and safely. Now the other thing I'm going to touch on is Yes, I've done lots of these, and most of you probably have anyway, and you might have a good set of wire strippers. You might use some side cutters that can strip the wire fine. You'll need, everyone should have a screwdriver handy. But a lot of you at home doing DIY will not have a good quality wire stripper. So I'll show you how you can do it with side cutters, and we might even try and do it with some scissors just so that you know it can be done without having to buy expensive tools. So first things first, I've measured where I want this cut. We can cut that and good scissors will cut a cord. Now before we cut it, clearly you need to make sure it's not plugged in. Now most scissors are strong enough to cut through a cord, but the cords really aren't that tough to cut. I'll put the camera down so I can do it easily. Uh, copper is a very soft metal and you won't really damage the blades on your scissors. So, we can work through that. There we go. And you can see there's three strands there, which is our active neutral and earth, and I'll show you the colours in a minute. Now, when you buy your plug, it will come in a packet, and somewhere in the packet, on the box or the cover or a piece of paper, it will have links that you need to cut the wire back to. 70 millimetres is there. So the first trick now is to cut that sheathing back without damaging the inside wires. Uh, I've seen a lot of guys over the years try and scrape it back like this, and you're going to you're going to take slithers off the inside wires. You'll end up with a dodgy job. So the way I like to do it is to fold the wire and put a fair bit of pressure on it. Make sure it's really folded round tight. Whoops, because that's going to stretch the rubber on the outer side and then with a nice sharp blade we're just going to push in a little bit not very much we actually don't want to cut right through we just want to basically score it and we'll do that in a few spots and what will happen is that the rubber will actually start to open up and you do get it pulling away from each other I'm trying to do this and make sure the camera stayed focused so it's a bit of a challenge. You do need a very sharp knife and the last thing you want to do is drag it across like you're sawing. Just push in and rock it a bit and you can see it's starting to cut through there. You need a bit of patience because if you do push too far and cut the inside wires you're going to have to measure another 70 mil, and next thing you know your cord's too short. So after a while we see that, we can see the blue wire inside and we haven't nicked it. And you can see now that when we fold the cord, it actually starts to open up. It starts to tear around. And you won't hurt the inside wires. They're fairly flexible. So we'll just push a little bit here too. And after a while, with a bit of folding back and forward, you can see it's starting to open up. Now some rubber, some cords do this much easier than others. This is an older extension cord and the rubber's probably gone a little bit hard. 
I would suggest that on a new cord it would probably work much easier. So there we go, it's opening up nicely. A bit of folding back and forward. And there we go. So it's as easy as that. And the inside wires are undamaged. So now with a little bit of effort, as long as it's not attached anywhere, that will actually pull off. There we go. Now we have, in Australia, we have blue is neutral, green and yellow is earth or ground, and brown, that's a funny looking brown, but brown is active. So neutral, earth, active. In the States, I think they have white and black, and then green seems to be universal for earth, even though this is actually yellow with a green stripe. Anyway, you'll know what yours are in your country, and if you don't, just Google it. So there we have that cut back, 70 mil. Now the next thing to do, before we strip the ends, put the tail nut of the plug on, because invariably people forget that, and then they have to unwire it all. And then following that, the boot as well. It's much easier to push them over the wires before we strip the ends of them. So there we go. So now we just need to strip back these wire lengths and our chart says, if we look at our chart, it says nine millimeter of wire. Okay, I've marked those wires. I've marked them around 10 mil. Um, given that the texture mark is nearly a mil wide, that's going to be accurate enough. And what we'll do is we'll try and uh, strip three of them back in different ways. We'll try the blue one with scissors the active or the brown one with side cutters and we'll do the earth with my wire stripper just to show you the difference. Now the thing is with scissors they're clearly not designed as an electrical tool and they're very sharp so you can't you do have to be careful obviously not to cut yourself but also you can't kind of sandwich the wire in there and expect to slide the insulation off without cutting the wire so all, all i'm going to do with the scissors is just use them to lever the plastic off i'm just going to run around the plastic just lightly with the blade just where we want to cut it and again we're not cutting right into the copper we're just scoring the insulation a little bit i'm going to put it on the bench to do that and i'm just going to push down and just roll the wire a little bit so I don't want to go so hard that I'm cutting into the copper but it will score some of the way through the insulation and then we should be able to use the scissors to if we line it up with where we scored and we'll just basically use them as, as some way of grabbing the insulation and I think we should be able to just slide it off. There we go. So that was pretty easy. They work fine. Have a practice on some scrap wire first, if you like. Now, we're going to need to twitch the wire because the last thing you want is little strands of copper that aren't in the main section and they might short out onto something. So we always twitch the wire around. So that one was with scissors. The next one, a lot of... Uh, older electricians that didn't have fancy wire strippers they would just use pliers or side cutters now these aren't as sharp as scissors and so what you can do is you can actually grab them and squeeze but not squeeze hard enough to cut the wire and then normally you'll see them um, a sparky sort of clutch his fist to his chest and, and give it a bit of a reef and it just pulls it off it's a bit hard to do it here in front of the camera yeah it didn't quite grip properly but you can see the process so you want to squeeze hard enough to grab the insulation, but not hard enough to cut through the wire. So I'll try it again from here. There we go, that worked. It's a little bit difficult on that angle, but I wanted to show you that I was doing it then and not stopping the camera and doing it another way. So there we go, those two are both done. And the earth wire, we're going to use my my stripping tool here which I highly recommend if you're going to be doing a bit of wire stripping um, I'll put a link in the bottom uh, for one of these on Amazon because they are great strippers and you better I'll just line the mark up in the middle 
and the mechanism does the clamping and the pulling at the same time and you can strip wires super quickly super accurately and you don't get any loose strands so probably a number of different brands of these but they're they're really good wire strippers all right so we twitch all the wires and now all we need to do is wire up our plug now at this stage it's probably a good idea to make sure you've got the nut uh, the tail nut and the plug boot over the wire and then we should be able to just position the plug in the middle here and you need to know where to wire them now most modern plugs are actually marked with an A for active and this one has got an A just near my thumbnail there and then this other one's neutral N for neutral and they even mark the E for earth even though it's pretty obvious and most people know that the bottom pin is an earth of course you have different types of plugs in the UK I'm not sure about in the States whether you use I, th I think they have straight ones in the States I'm sure you guys will let me know I do like the UK plugs they have really chunky brass pins but ours are a bit thinner and smaller now if they're not marked here's a trick so that you can remember which one's active and which one's neutral and before you say oh it's alternating current it doesn't matter which way you put them it actually does uh, it doesn't matter in the respect that things like light globes and electric motors and, and just about everything you run off AC will work with the wires on the opposite terminals it matters in that a lot of um, appliances are switched on the active which means that when the switch on the appliance is turned off the active wire comes into the appliance straight to the switch and then the wire the essentially the power is off to the rest of the implement rest of the appliance if you wire an extension cord or an appliance cord the wrong way so the polarity is reversed it means that the neutral will be switched and the active wire will actually run right into the appliance and that means that some of the appliance can actually be live even when the switch is off so i hope that makes sense and the best way to remember if they're not marked is when you hold a plug in front of you and i'm standing behind the camera now so this is in front of me i'll try and keep it focused and the earth pin is down it's the lowest pin then the pin closest to you is the active so now that we know which one's active we can start hooking the wires up now active remember is brown or it used to be red in australia so what we're going to do is we're going to fold the stripped part of the wire over and so crease it with your thumbnail fold it round making sure there's no loose strands because we twitched it pretty tight so there's no loose strands of copper and then we're going to feed that in there is a loose strand there that's all right we'll feed that in behind that plate now i've already loosened these screws off so we feed it in so there's no loose wires we now do that screw up tight and we do the same with each other wire making sure it's on the right terminal so i'll put this down on the bench and do this screw up and you want to do the screw nice and firm you don't want to over tighten it because you'll actually start to guillotine the wire but it's nice and firm the wire is squashed up nicely in there it feels nice and tight there's no loose strands now we're going to do the same with each other wire and then I'll show you how to finish it off. Okay, so all wires are securely attached and all we do need to do now is just anchor them so that the plug remains uh, safe and can't be pulled apart basically. So what they've provided, and most modern plugs have some form of uh, strain relief on the wire and in these ones you actually loop the wire up around the loop there and then pulls back and so what that does is that i'll get the other ones on first so that we can sort of see it a bit better so you loop the wire up around through there takes a bit to push it on there and you see our, our length cord length is about right and we've just got the active to do now little bit awkward to get these around 
Sometimes you may need to take a little bit more off the sheath just so it fits securely. Okay, you can see that I've got it around there. It was a bit firm. Um, this could have been a whisker. Um, I could have taken a whisker more off the sheath, but I got it around there and all these wires are securely attached. So the idea there is that if the cord suffers a trauma, say if it gets caught and, and it pulls, or someone pulls it out of the power point without grabbing the plug, these sections will take most of the force and it won't pull the wire out of the terminal. So that's the reason for that. It's called a stress relief. Uh, most, as I said, pretty well all modern plugs have them in some form or another. So you do need, that is important to hook that all up properly so that there's no danger of your wires pulling out of the terminals. And the extra, the extra safety on that too is your, the nut that goes on the tail here. It's just slipped down the cord a bit. I'll get it in a tick. So all we need, need to do now is push the boot over the top. And these can be pretty firm to push on. The rubber on new plugs is sometimes quite hard. Um, it may even be worth leaving it in the sun just to soften it a little bit. But it's going to be a bit hard for me to do it whilst behind the camera. But yeah, we've just got to... Sometimes it's probably easy just to push it down like that. And just work it around so it clips over the front. Alternatively, we could help it along with the screwdriver. So a little bit fiddly this last bit. But we just really need to get the plug boot clipped over properly so it's all secure. And it's just about right now. There we go. So that's clipped there solidly. The beauty about the clear boots is we can see that our wires are all snugly in there. There's no, um, none sort of no loose wires or anything flopping around. And likewise, you can inspect the plug down the track to make sure it's still looking safe. But of course, most of them aren't clear. Now we just got to tighten this tail nut up. And again, that also provides some, some pull relief, stress relief on the cord. So there we go, plug fitted, uh, relatively straightforward. It is very important, of course, on an extension cord, you must have an earth wire. Some appliances you do might not have an earth. If they're double insulated, they'll just run an active and a neutral wire. Some plugs on double insulated appliances still have an earth pin, but it's just more for stability than an actually run an earth wire. So there's our little short cord. I'll take that in now for Christine. And uh, that solves her problem. And I've got to show you how to put a plug on an appliance. Hope that was helpful. I'll see you in the next video.